Welcome to the long overdue 12th episode of the Worst Entertainment Companies. Through this series, I try and shed a light on the poor management and mistreatment idols are subjected to by their companies. I find it important for us as fans of K-pop to be aware that the industry is far from perfect and to keep the conversation going on these issues. This is an episode on Cube Entertainment. It will cover the history of Cube Entertainment and how their favoritism towards certain soloists and groups has negatively impacted their artists. Realistically speaking, the majority of people would not consider Cube Entertainment to be one of the worst entertainment companies. However, this goes to show that Cube succeeded at pulling the wool over the eyes of the consumer by its established reputation as a reliable company that grants its artists creative freedom. And while Cube does allow their idols to self-produce and self-compose, they also have a tendency to sabotage and replace the groups that they believe aren't profitable enough. Yet not many people have spoken about how poorly Cube Entertainment manages their artists. This will be a two-part episode to be able to tread into detail since Cube Entertainment has managed quite a few artists. Part 1 will cover the history of 4Minute as a lot of the company's reoccurring issues are rooted in the mismanagement of 4Minute. That being said, it is time to unravel the complexity that is Cube Entertainment. Cube Entertainment, originally Play Cube Inc., was founded on August 29th of 2006 by former JYP president Hong Sung Sung. Sung was clever enough to utilize his connections to JYP Entertainment to recruit the young and promising artist Hyuna, who had just left the agency. And it's needless to say that Hyuna would draw a lot of attention to Cube Entertainment. In the first half of 2009, Cube Entertainment announced their plans of debuting a five-member girl group that would go by the name of 4Minute. The first member that would be announced was, of course, ex Wonder Girls member Kim Hyuna. The four remaining members, Ji Hyun, Ga Yoon, Ji Yoon, and So Hyun, were announced on May 22nd and May 23rd of 2009. Hyuna became Cube's biggest selling point for their new girl group, since she already had a following from being a former Wonder Girls member a few years prior. Cube Entertainment always seemed to push Hyuna to the forefront, whether they intended to or not, and this would eventually lead to Four Minutes' downfall. Four Minute made their debut with their single titled Hot Issue on June 15th of 2009, followed by their debut performance on M Countdown on June 18th. Four Minute had a successful debut with Hot Issue, peaking at number two on the charts. In August of that year, Four Minute returned with their title track Music off their first mini album, Four Music, which they received an Inky Gayo Mutasen Award for. Unfortunately, 4 Minutes Girl Crush image wasn't appreciated by everyone as KBS banned the song Won't Give You from being played on the radio as they found it to be too racy. After having barely established their name in South Korea, Cube Entertainment decided to aim high for 4 Minute. In 2010, they partnered with Universal Music Group to help the girl group make their international debut. This led to the group touring around Asia and releasing a Japanese version of music on May 5th of 2010, but the response to 4 Minutes International Ventures wasn't what Cube had anticipated as music peaked at number 21 on the Oricon Weekly chart. Soon enough, Cube Entertainment realized that they could garner more profit by utilizing Kiana's popularity, and so they pushed the idol to the forefront as a soloist. On January 4th of 2010, Hyuna released her solo debut single titled Change. The debut single charted high as expected, but similar to 4 Minute, Hyuna as a solo artist was also deemed too provocative, and soon the Change music video would receive a 19 plus rating from the Ministry of Gender, Equality and Family as it was considered inappropriate for minors. Cube would then re-edit the music video and resubmit it for approval, but alas, the music video would remain restricted for viewers under 15 years of age. In 
In May of that year, 4-Minute returned with Hit Your Heart, their second mini-album for which they promoted the title track of the same name as well as the song Who's Next that featured Beast, who were also signed with Cube at the time. The song Hit Your Heart was well received by the public and peaked at number 3 on the Gang chart. In January of 2011, For a Minute received a Bong Sang Award at the 21st Seoul Music Awards and the K-Pop New Artist Award at the Billboard Japan Music Awards. Later that same year, 4 Minute returned with their first studio album titled 4 Minutes Left. The music video for the title track, Mirror Mirror, was released the same day. Both the album and its title track peaked at number 2 on the Gaon chart. With their past releases all charting fairly high, it indicated that the popularity of the group was on a steady rise. In July of 2011, Kiana made her first comeback with her album Bubble Pop. The song became an instant success and ended up on YouTube's Most Watched Today page as the music video for Bubble Pop had managed to gain over 1 million views in just one day. It even became the first music video by a K-pop artist to surpass over 100 million views on YouTube. Bubble Pop not only solidified Kenna's career as a solo artist, but even more so pushed her to the center of attention. Ever since then, Cube Entertainment tried involving Kenna in any project they possibly could, because wherever Kenna went, money would follow. And so, in December of 2011, Cube debuted the Koa duo named Troublemaker. The duo consisted of 4 Minutes Hyena and Beast Hyunsung. They debuted with the title track of the same name, Troublemaker. It seemed that Cube intended on capitalizing off of Hyena's popularity as well as her sexy image. They pushed this narrative of there being romantic chemistry between Hyena and Hyunsung, as their performances for their debut single were highly suggestive. This feeling rather uncomfortable considering that Hyena was only 19 years old at the time. Regardless, Cube gained the publicity they desired as the group received nothing but criticism for their scandalous image, this drawing even more attention to Hyuna. Meanwhile, Hyuna's popularity would skyrocket once again when she was featured in the music video for the viral hit Gangnam Style that took the world by storm back in 2012, meaning that Hyuna would be exposed to a global audience, giving her even more exposure. Hyena would then go on to make her own rendition of the song titled Oppa's Just My Style. Riding on the success wave, that was 2012, Hyena released her second mini album Melting in October of that year, for which she promoted the title track Ice Cream. The music video featured the now global star Psy, and the single managed to catch the attention of a global audience, and was the then fastest Korean music video to reach 20 million views. Earlier that year in April, 4 Minute returned with a single and album of the same name, Volume Up. This release again proved that the group's popularity was steadily increasing since the single reached number 1 on M Countdown as well as it being their best-selling album with over 50,000 copies being sold. But the year 2013 would become a turning point where after Hyuna's rise to global stardom and the involvement of talent management agency IHQ, 4 Minute's success is beginning to be questioned, and even though the group was doing well, it was no longer good enough moving forward. In 2013, the subunit Tuyun made its debut. The duo consisted of 4 Minute members Gaeyun and Jiyun. Both members held their own, becoming the first Korean girl group to be interviewed by Time magazine. Their song 24-7, however, received mixed reviews from the public, with some criticizing it for trying to incorporate elements of country music into K-pop, going as far as calling it an experimental failure. What is noticeable is that the music video for 24-7 has little views in comparison to most 4-minute music videos. It appears that the quote-unquote failed debut led Cube Entertainment to give up on giving any member except Hyuna subunit or solo promotions as they seem to believe it would be unsuccessful. In 2013, 4 Minute paired up with Brave Brothers for their April comeback. He helped them produce the title track What's Your Name off the album Name Is For Minute. The next year, in March of 2014, 4 Minute paired up with Brave Brothers once again to produce the single What You Doin' Today. 
The group continued to do well on the charts at this time. The single What You Doin' Today managed to peak at number one on the Korean charts. It even surpassed numbers of popular groups like 21 and Girls' Generation on Inkigayo, and also secured the group a win on M Countdown. Hyuna also had several promotional activities during these two years. In October of 2013, Troublemaker announced their return through a provocative photo shoot that would be age-restricted because of its suggestive context. The album was fittingly titled Chemistry, to which the duo promoted its single now throughout October and November. Despite the general criticism now received the highest score ever recorded on Inkigayo at the time, the chemistry between the two performers was played up even more during the promotions for this comeback. This is pretty ironic since Hyanna's contract would later be terminated for being romantically involved with another idol. Apparently it is only acceptable when the company is able to exploit Hyanna for it, but more on that later. Hyanna would then return in the summer of 2014 with her title track, Red. The album was critically acclaimed by Billboard and Rolling Stone as they praise the solo artist once again for making her mark as a global star. The achievements of 4Minute as a group and Hyanna as a soloist throughout 2013 and 2014 indicated that their success was steadily increasing still, but one thing the group could not measure up to was Hyanna's global success. Cube Entertainment was more than aware of this and was planning to use it against the group. On February 9th of 2015, 4 Minute changed K-pop forever when they released their legendary hit, Crazy. Shockingly though, it is rumored that Cube Entertainment threatened to disband the group if the comeback did not do well. 4 Minute's Crazy, however, exceeded all expectations as the album charted at number one at release on the Billboard World Album Charts. Besides this, it remains as 4 Minute's most viewed music video until this very day. While this was the breakout success Cube Entertainment had been waiting for, it appeared the agency did nothing out of the ordinary to promote the comeback, despite it being the perfect opportunity to seize its popularity. It would have been the ideal time to introduce the group to a global market, as well as scheduling promotional activities for the individual members. But none of that happened. It felt as if by the time 4Minute had found the international success the entertainment was so desperately longing for, they had already given up on the group. Later that year, Hyanna released her fourth mini album for which she promoted the title track Roll Deep featuring Il Hoon of B2B. The comeback would even go on to earn her the award for best solo dance performance at the Mnet Asian Music Awards in December of 2015. In January of 2016, the group would make what would become their final comeback, Hate, for which the group collaborated with a producer Skrillex. Hate followed in Crazy's footsteps in terms of success. The title track managed to secure the group seven music show wins. 4 Minute was at the peak of their career, and their musical identity was fully formed, making them a strong contender in the K-pop industry. But Cube Entertainment's priority no longer lied with 4 Minute as a group. In June of 2016, it was announced by Cube Entertainment that 4 Minute would be disbanding. This in of itself isn't that odd, as disbandment is inevitable. But the circumstances of the disbandment seemed odd, especially given how well 4Minute was doing in the last two years of their career. But what was even more strange is that the only member to resign with the agency was Hyanna. Cube Entertainment stated the following about the disbandment. Ji Hyun, Ga Yoon, Ji Yoon, and So Hyun's exclusive contracts ended on June 14th, and the four have left Cube. We had long negotiations concerning the four members resigning, and at the end of the mediation, it was decided that they would not resign. The label is respecting their decision and sincerely cheer on their futures. The news came as a shock to many, even the members of 4Minute themselves. Jian stated that the members didn't have any conversations about disbanding. She said, even before we started thinking about the individual paths we wanted to take, our contracts ended, and it was pretty chaotic. Honestly, it felt like we were finding out about our disbandment through the reports. We weren't thinking about disbanding, and when we saw the reports of disbandment, we thought, ah, so that's what happened, and calmly started tidying things up. Both these statements of Cube Entertainment as well as Jiyun allude to the fact that these four members were not given the option to renew their contracts, 
and that their contracts were all terminated as per the entertainment's decision. The difference in treatment caused a divide among the members and Hyanna, so much so that the now ex-members of 4Minute all unfollowed Hyanna on social media. Of course, it wasn't Hyanna that was to blame for this decision. The real antagonist here is corporate greed that goes by the name of IHQ. IHQ is a talent management agency that played a vital role in 4Minute's disbandment. In 2013, IHQ bought out 50% of Cube Entertainment. It was IHQ that deemed 4Minute's latest releases as a failure, labeling them as a non-profitable group. They chose profit over music, and without Cube Entertainment having full control over this crucial decision, CEO Hung Sung Sung was powerless in protecting the group that he had considered his own. Hyuna, being the most profitable artist according to IHQ, was given the opportunity to resign with the company, while the four remaining members were let go of without having had any say in their future. And so, 4Minute met their untimely demise. With 4Minute freshly disbanded, Cube Entertainment could now fully focus on Hyuna's solo career. And only two months after the disbandment, Hyuna returned with her title track, How's This? During a press conference to promote the comeback, Hyuna was asked about 4Minute's disbandment. In this clip, Hyuna is visibly upset by the narrative of her that's been created by the public after the news of the disbandment broke, almost as if it's being insinuated that she's happy to promote Solo, when she really had no control over Cube's decision. Hyuna had to bear the consequences of Cube Entertainment's actions. She states in this clip that she's worried about the remaining members because they didn't get the chance to speak on the disbandment or their relationship with Hyuna since they're no longer in the public eye. And she continues on by saying that she has mixed emotions about speaking on the disbandment while promoting her comeback because it gives the impression that she purposefully came back right after the disbandment just to talk about her former members. Shanna even went as far as saying that she hated herself for becoming the person that the public made her out to be. It is upsetting to see Hyuna this way, even more so that Q put her in this position. Hyuna being the only member to re-sign with the company put a target on her back. It gave angry fans someone to point their finger at. Hyuna being the face of 4Minute was the one to take the fall for Cube's ruthless actions. What is even worse is that Cube did very little, if anything at all, to protect their artists from the scrutiny she was under, allowing it to affect her mental health. Merely a year after her departure from 4Minute, Cube Entertainment crammed Hena into yet another subunit, this time with Huey and Edan of Pentagon, a boy group that made their debut in 2016, most likely in the hopes of getting the public more interested in the male members and their respective group by getting Hyanna involved. Because that always does the trick, right? They debuted under the name Triple H, introducing themselves to the world on May 1st, 2017, with the title track 365 Fresh. Their song catchy and their concept as scantily clad and uncensored, similar to Troublemaker back in 2013. In August of 2017, Hyanna released her sixth mini album, for which she promoted the title track Bebe. It is easy to see Hyanna's inspiration behind the song, considering the upcoming events. And later that year, Hyanna would go on to release the undeniably iconic hit that is known as Lip and Hip. She's got a point. She's an icon. She's a legend, and she is the moment. Now come on now. This would also become Hyanna's final solo release under Cube Entertainment. In 2018, Triple H returned with their second mini album, Retro Futurism, promoting its title track, Retro Future. The chemistry between the members during the live performances was almost tangible, so much so that it sparked dating rumors between Hyanna and Edon. Cube Entertainment initially denied these reports. But on August 3rd of 2018, Hyena took to her Instagram to confirm her relationship with Triple H member Edon. She posted the following, I really wanted to be honest, for the fans who always support me and watch over me, I want to work hard on stage with a happy heart, with nothing to hide as I always have, confirming that the pair had in fact been dating since 2016. The company had desperately tried to continue to deny the rumors as well as Hyena's statement, 
but the damage had already been done and Cube didn't take too kindly to Hyena taking the liberty to speak freely on her romantic endeavors. And so both idols were put on a temporary hiatus by the entertainment company until further notice. This hiatus primarily affected Edon as he was being kept from preparing and promoting for Pentagon's upcoming comeback. This decision infuriated Pentagon fans, demanding for him to stay under the company. Other fans, mostly netizens, demanding for him to be removed from the company as his marketable image was now ruined, as if they had a chance with him to begin with, but I digress. A board of directors at Cube Entertainment then held several meetings to decide on the future of the idols. And finally, on September 13th of 2018, Cube Entertainment came to the decision of terminating both Yana and Edon's contracts with the company due to what they called a breakdown of trust. Hyuna would officially part ways with the agency on October 15th and Edon one month later on November 14th. This would mark the end of nearly 10 years Hyuna spent under the contractual bounds of Cube Entertainment. In the videos posted on her social media right after her departure, it seems that Hyuna is enjoying her newly found freedom alongside her boyfriend Edon. Some might even theorize that the idol made her relationship public as a way to get out from under Cube Entertainment's contract, but I'll leave that up to you. Nonetheless, Hyuna now walked free with the knowledge that she could continue her career elsewhere as any entertainment agency would be eager to sign her under their label. Finally, in January of 2019, Hyuna, as well as Edon, started a new signing with Psy's label P Nation, which would ultimately mark the end of an era for Cube Entertainment and a rebirth for Hyuna's career. After the disbandment, the four minute members all went their separate ways, signing with different agencies and some of them even embarking on different paths. Ji Hyun picked up on her acting career since the disbandment and created her own YouTube channel in 2020 where she posts several dance covers. Main vocal Gaeun also went into acting as it was something that she always wanted to try. Ji Yoon signed with JNS ENM Entertainment in August of 2016, making her solo debut on November 2nd with I Do, making her first proper comeback just last year on August 24th with Bad. Promoting on several music shows for the first time since the disbandment, Jean also has a YouTube channel where she posts vlogs and other content. As mentioned earlier, Hyuna had a full circle moment as Psy took her under his wing once again, and after signing with P Nation, Hyuna returned with Flower Shower in November of 2019 and has been promoting under P Nation ever since, with her most recent comeback being I'm Not Cool. Fans were pleasantly surprised when they noticed that X4 Minute members liked Hyuna's Instagram posts for the first time since the disbandment. Hyuna also has a YouTube channel where she shares a more personal side of her life. And last but not least, Maknae Sohyun also went the acting route, making her first appearance on the Korean version of Criminal Minds in 2017, and she has been working on several movies since. While everything has fallen into place for the former group, the harsh circumstances of the disbandment left an impact on the ex-members for a long time. In an interview in 2018, Ji Hyun revealed that she had a difficult time after four minutes disbandment. She said, I really had a hard time for a year after four minutes disbanded. I was afraid of meeting people, so I avoided going out for a month. I felt empty at how the seven years disappeared all at once, but I got myself together telling myself that I'm Ji Hyun of four minutes. I went to the karaoke with my friends not too long ago and they asked me to sing 4 minute songs and it weirdly made me sad when they asked me that. The disbandment is still fresh in my mind so it's a painful memory to me. When she was asked about Hyuna's decision to stay with the entertainment agency, Ji Hyun admitted that she was upset but that she came to understand Hyuna's decision later on. Ji Hyun also stated her desire for the members to reunite. The 4-minute members did actually gather once before back in 2017, with all members being present except for Hyuna, possibly because of the emotional turmoil between the members, but that's just speculation. In 2019, Jiyoon, Gaeun, and Sohyun met up once again to celebrate 4 minutes 10th anniversary. Jiyoon recently revealed in an interview that the members still keep in touch and stated her wishes for the group to reunite in the future. It is clear that the 4-minute members were hurting for a long time, as they never properly got to end their time in the group. 
nor did Cube Entertainment grant them any closure. Four Minute was set up for failure from the moment IHQ viewed them as Hyuna's competitor. While Four Minute collectively was a strong contender in the highly competitive K-pop industry, they could not compete with Hyuna's individual and international popularity. This in turn made them look like a failed project in comparison to Hyuna as a soloist, which was never a fair comparison to begin with, taking into account that Hyuna already had a pre-existing fanbase and the fact that she coincidentally got exposed to a global audience, and by the time For Minute did attract the attention from the international public, the company had already shifted their focus. IHQ had their eyes set on Hyuna, favoring her career over For Minutes because Hyuna was the more profitable investment. This, unfortunately, is how the industry works, but there is no denying that the way IHQ went about For Minutes' disbandment was morally corrupt. Seven years of hard work, shared experiences, and achievements were taken from under Ji Hyun, Gayun, Jian, and So Hyun, with the excuse of not being profitable enough, and Cube Entertainment was a bystander in this. Cube Entertainment has a tendency to replace their artists with new ones, leaving the old ones out to dry. Their blatant favoritism that is endorsed by IHQ is what is setting their own artists up for failure, which is why they're one of the worst entertainment companies. I will delve further into how this manifests itself in part 2 of this episode. I will also discuss Cube Entertainment's issues with Beast, the negligence of CLC, the favoritism of Idol, and the future of Lightsum, among other topics. That concludes part 1 of this episode. I tried my best to research this topic to the best of my ability. But please be so kind to correct me if any of the information I presented was incorrect or if I missed any parts of crucial information. Also, feel free to leave a comment with additional information on this topic because that is helpful to me or anyone who wants to learn more about the history of Cube Entertainment. That brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hey!